Morning all. All right, so we're going to talk about the 2001-2002 season in the National Hockey League. Uh, Boston finishing first in the East that season, but they had a bad matchup in the first round, and Detroit finishes first in the West. They had a much better time of it. So Boston does finish first in the East. They finished 43-24, 6-9, 101 points, 236 goals scored, 201 goals against. They did not have a listed captain that year. The Philadelphia Flyers finished 42-27, 10-3. So we're still looking at four columns, that fourth column being overtime losses. So 97 points for Philly, 234 goals scored, 192 goals against. They were captained by both Keith Primo and Eric Desjardins that season. Carolina finishes 35, 26, 16, and 5, 91 points. Uh, captained by Ron Francis, 217 goals scored, 217 goals against. The Toronto Maple Leafs finished 43, 25, 10, and 4, 100 points. And of course, their fourth seed, Carolina's number three, Philadelphia's number two, because the division winners get the top three seeds. But Toronto, as mentioned, 43, 25, 10, and 4, 249 goals scored, 207 goals against. Matt Sundin, their captain at this point. The New York Islanders finished 42, 28, 8, and 4, 96 points, so a strong season for New York. 239 goals scored, 220 goals against. Michael Pekka is their captain. The New Jersey Devils finished 41, 28, 9, and 4, so almost the exact same record as the Islanders, 95 points. 205 goals scored, 187 goals against. Scott Stevens, their captain. The Ottawa Senators finished 39, 27, 9, and 7. Uh, 94 points for the Sens. Daniel Alford, since their captain, they scored 243 goals. They allowed 208 that season. The Montreal Canadiens finished just above the playoff line, 36, 31, 12, and 3. 87 points. Yeah. Right. If you hear a cat, it's because she wants to go outside, and right now she's bugging me to go outside. So if you hear her crying in the background. All right, so Montreal finishes 36, 31, 12, and 3, 87 points, 207 goals scored, 209 goals against. They are captained by Saku Koivu. Just under the uh, playoff line with 85 points are the Washington Capitals. She's whacking me with her tail right now. Uh, Washington 36, 33, 11, and 2 record, captained by Brendan Witt. 228 goals scored, 240 goals against. Um, cats are funny that way, aren't they? That they'll just decide, I'm angry because you're not doing what I'm telling you. All right, uh, Buffalo finishes 35, 35, 11, and 1. 82 points for them, 213 goals scored, 200 goals against. They're captained by Stu Barnes. The New York Rangers finish 36, 38, 4, and 4. 80 points, 227 goals scored, 258 goals against. So the Rangers just not keeping the puck out of their net. They're captained once again by Mark Messier after uh, the Vancouver Canucks debacle falls through. He goes back to New York. Uh, Pittsburgh finishes 28, 41, 8, and 5. We will be talking about them later. 69 points for Pittsburgh, 198 goals scored, 249 goals against. Mario Lemieux is their captain. Uh, the Tampa Bay Lightning, who are listed as not having a captain that year, 27, 40, 11, and 4 record, 69 points as well. 178 goals scored, 219 goals against. The Florida Panthers go 22, 44, 10, and 6. 60 points for them. 180 goals scored, 250 goals against. Pavel Burry is their captain that season. Uh, the Atlanta Thrashers, back to the bottom. Record of 19, 47, 11, and 5. 54 points, 187 goals scored, 288 goals against. They are captained by Ray Ferraro. Out West, Detroit finishes 51, 17, 10, and 4. 116 points, uh, 251 goals scored, 187 goals against. And, of course, they're captained by Steve Eiserman. Uh, Colorado finishes 45, 28, 8, and 1. 99 points for them. Captained by Joe Sackick, of course. 212 goals scored, 169 goals against. The San Jose Sharks finish 44, 27, 8, and 3. 99 points as well. 248 goals scored, 199 goals against. Owen Nolan is their captain. Uh, the St. Louis Blues <clears throat> finished 43, 27, 8, and 4. 98 points. 227 goals scored, 188 goals against. They're captained by Chris Pronger. I, I swear I feel better than I sound right now. Uh, Chicago finishes 41, 27, 10, 13, and 1 on the season. 96 points for them. Captain by Tony Amante. Uh, 216 goals scored, 207 goals against. It's Amante. No idea why I said it that way. 
Uh, Arizona, 40, 27, 9, and 6. Uh, 95 points. They're captained by Teppo Newmanen. Uh, 228 goals scored, 210 goals against. The LA Kings, 40, 27, 11, and 4 on the season. 95 points as well. 214 goals scored, 190 goals against. Matthias Nordstrom is the captain in LA at this point. Vancouver finishes above the playoff line in eighth again, but they're better than they were the year before. 42, 37, and 3 record, 94 points, 254 goals scored, 211 goals against. Marcus Nasland is the captain in Vancouver at that point. Just below the playoff line with 92 points is the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, they finished 38, 28, 12, and 4, 205 goals scored, 182 goals against. They're captained by Jason Smith. The Dallas Stars fall out of the playoffs. 90 points for them. Record of 36, 28, 13, and 5. 215 goals scored, 213 goals against. They're captained by Darian Hatcher. The Calgary Flames finished 32, 35, 12, and 3. 79 points, 201 goals scored, 220 goals against. Three guys wore the C that year. Bob Bugner, Dave Lowry, and Craig Conroy. Two of those guys have been head coaches in the National Hockey League. Bugner and Conroy. Dave Lowry's an assistant coach, too. Yeah, so some good coaches on that team in Calgary that season. Uh, Minnesota, 26, 35, 12, and 9 record, 73 points, 195 goals scored, 238 goals against. Uh, very, very small. Like, this is the second year for Minnesota, right? Uh, four captains that year, Brad Brown, Jim Dowd, Andrew Burnett, and Philippe Kubak. And then Anaheim finishes 29, 42, 8, and 3, 69 points for them. 175 goals scored, 198 goals against. Paul Correa is the captain in Anaheim. Nashville finishes 28, 41, and 13. No overtime losses. 196 goals scored, 230 goals against. Also 69 points. Tom Fitzgerald is their captain. Uh, the Columbus Blue Jackets finished last in the West. 22, 47, 8, and 5 record. 57 points. 164 goals scored, 255 goals against. Lyle Odeline is the captain in Columbus. So the Penguins are having financial issues to the point where they can't pay for Yarmer Yager. Um, this is a time where Pittsburgh's getting closer to discussions of, are they going to move? What's going to happen? They need another savior. And so Messier, or Messier, Lemieux does what he has to do. And of course, they end up getting Crosby. But they trade Yarmer Yager with French set Kuchera. Uh, to Washington in exchange for Chris Beach, uh, Ross Lupuschuk, Michael Civic, and $4.9 million. So it is a trade that is very lopsided. It was known at the time it was lopsided because they had to sell Yarmir Yager. They couldn't afford to pay for him. Uh, this is also the first season that both Alberta-based teams missed the playoffs since the move from Atlanta to Calgary for the Flames. Uh, it is also the first time since 1980 that the Art Ross winner is not named Mario Lemieux, Wayne Gretzky, or Yaramir Yager. It was a strange time indeed. Uh, Canada also won gold at the Olympics at men's hockey for the first time since 1952. And of course, that was with NHLers there. That was a, a pretty good moment for Canada. Uh, June 23rd, 2001, the Senators trade Alexi Yashin to the Isles in exchange for Zdeno Chara, Bill McCault, and a first-round draft pick. What's interesting is, of course, Chara didn't become the player he would be in, in Ottawa while he was in New York. So at the time of the trade, it kind of looked like maybe the Islanders might get the edge. They didn't. Um, <clears throat> June 30th of 2001, the Sabres trade Dominic Hasek to the Detroit Red Wings for Slava Kozlov, a 2002 first, and a first or future considerations. Future considerations used a lot in trades. Uh, August 22nd of 2001, the Red Wings sign Brett Hull. Uh, August 20th of 2001, the Flyers trade Lindros. So Lindros, of course, they moved heaven and earth a decade earlier to get him, and then they trade him. The relationship between Bobby Clark and Eric Lindros had completely been destroyed at this point. And so Lindros is traded to the Rangers for Jan Hlavac, uh, Kim Janssen, Pavel Brendel, and a 2003 third-round draft pick. But at this point, Lindros is damaged goods. Uh, he wasn't the same after the Stevens hit. He wasn't the same after all those concussions. And uh, the New York Rangers doing whatever they can to try to get back above the playoff line, which does not work. Uh, December 26th of 2001, Patrick Waugh becomes the first goaltender in NHL history to reach 500 career wins. Uh, April 11th of 2002, Roger Nielsen 
steps behind the bench for the Ottawa Senators. He becomes the first coach to do so for eight different National Hockey League teams. Uh, Roger Nielsen was a really good coach. I don't think I've done a coaching career video on him. At some point, I should. Uh, it's an interesting career. Like I said, eight different teams with him behind the bench. Uh, the Art Ross Trophy that year goes to Jerome McGinley of the Calgary Flames. The Masterton goes to Saku Koivu of the Montreal Canadiens. The Calder Trophy goes to Danny Heatley of the Atlanta Thrashers. Not yet. Not yet. We're not in 07 yet. Uh, the the uh, Conn Smythe Trophy goes to Nicholas Lidstrom of the Detroit Red Wings. Uh, the Selkie goes to Michael Pekka of the New York Islanders. The Hart Trophy goes to Jose Theodore of the Montreal Canadiens. He had a fantastic season and is the main reason that Montreal finishes above the playoff line at all. Uh, the Jack Adams goes to Bob Francis of the Phoenix Coyotes. Uh, the Norris Trophy goes to Nick Lidstrom of the Detroit Red Wings. The King Clancy goes to Ron Francis of the Carolina Hurricanes. He also wins the Lady Bing Trophy that year. Uh, the Lester Pearson goes to Jerome Aginla of the Calgary Flames. And the Rocket Richard Trophy also goes to Aginla of the Flames. The Vesna Trophy actually goes to Jose Theodore as well. The Jennings Trophy goes to Patrick Waugh of the Colorado Avalanche. Um, what's interesting is... That, of course, Iserman's the captain here, and Lidstrom wins a Conn Smythe. But I remember when Lidstrom was a captain, I believe it's in 08, he's a captain and wins the Stanley Cup. It's one of those silly things where the oh, team captains are always Canadian. I mean, it, mostly, yeah, but it's weird when a, a European captain wins everybody's. Wow, it's a European captain team. They're hockey players. So, <clears throat> looking at the leading scorers that year, Jerome McGinley from Calgary. 82 games, 52 goals, 44 assists, 96 points. So again, nobody reaches 100 points that season. Marcus Naslin of Vancouver, 81 games, 40 goals, 50 assists, 90 points. Uh, Todd Bertuzzi in Vancouver, 72 games, 36 goals, 49 assists, 85 points. As he's kind of at his peak, uh, Bertuzzi and, and Naslin, this is where the West Coast Express here is starting. And they're playing really, really well. Uh, they have a great season the year after, of course, um, and then 0304 happens, but I don't want to spoil it for people. Uh, Matt Sundin in Toronto, 82 games, 41 goals, 39 assists, 80 points. So there's only three players with more than 80 points in the NHL that season. <clears throat> Guillermo Yager, 69 games, uh, 31 goals, 48 assists, 79 points, of course, playing for Washington. It didn't work out well for Yager in Washington, so while Pittsburgh loses that trade, I don't know that Washington won that trade necessarily either. They don't make the playoffs. Yagers play not the same in Washington as it had been in Pittsburgh. And yeah, we'll get into that as we go further through this series, of course. Um, Joe Sackick in Colorado, 82 games, 26 goals, 53 assists, 79 points. Uh, Pavel Demetra in St. Louis, 82 games, 35 goals, 43 assists, 78 points. Uh, Adam Oates, playing for Washington and Philadelphia. And remember, he's 39 years of age at this point. 80 games, 14 goals, 64 assists, 78 points. Really strong season for him. Uh, Mike Medano in Dallas, <clears throat> 78 games, 33 goals. No, 34 goals, 43 assists, 74 points. That's 77 points. And again, I am better, feeling better than I have in days. My voice, my throat, don't want to cooperate today good thing i'm not a youtuber or anything um and then ron francis rounds out the top 10 scorers for carolina 80 games 27 goals 50 assists for 77 points uh your wins leader that year is dominic hashik with detroit he loved it in detroit you could see it right away 41 15 and 8 record 9 15 save percentage it had to be good for hashik to finally be in a situation where he didn't have to be the number one guy every night so, no offense to Buffalo, but it had to be nice for him to get to Detroit and have a great team in front of him. Uh, Berdur finished second in wins, of course, with the Devils. 38-26-9 record, 906 save percentage. Evgeny Nabokov in San Jose, 37-24-5 and five record, 918 save percentage. And Byron Defoe in Boston, 35-26-3 uh, record, 907 save percentage for Lord Byron. Uh, the conference quarterfinals, as we get into the playoffs portion of the program, and my, my voice says, yep, you should probably wrap this up soon. Uh, St. Louis wins four games to one over Chicago. San Jose beats Phoenix four games to one. Uh, Colorado beats LA four games to three. Did I call them Phoenix or Arizona? I probably called them Arizona again, didn't I? Uh, but yeah, Colorado beats LA in seven. So again, the Kings push 
uh, Colorado right to that seventh game. Uh, Detroit beats Vancouver four games to two. Vancouver was up 2 nothing in that series. Um, there's a goal from center ice that Dan Cloutier fumbles, and the rest happened. Um, Toronto beats the Islanders in seven games. Carolina beats New Jersey in six games. Ottawa beats Philadelphia in five games. And Montreal is a bad matchup for Boston. They beat Boston four games to two, even though they finished 14 points behind them in the regular season. Uh, the conference finals, Detroit beats St. Louis in five games. Colorado needs all seven games to beat San Jose in the second round, so San Jose nearly gets into the conference final. Uh, Toronto beats Ottawa in seven games. Good series, but again, Ottawa can't beat Toronto in the playoffs. Uh, Carolina then beats Montreal four games to two. In the conference finals, uh, Colorado and Detroit meet again because this is how nature intended it. Uh, Detroit wins at home 5-3, to three, then Colorado wins in Detroit 4-3 to three in overtime. Detroit wins in Colorado in overtime 2-1, to one. then Colorado wins 3-2 to two to tie the series at 2. Colorado wins in Detroit 2-1 to one in overtime, and then Detroit wins 2-0 and 7-0 in order to come back and win the series in 7 games. Tough series for the Colorado Avalanche. Entertaining for us as fans, tough for, for the Avs and probably for their fans as well. Uh, Toronto faces Carolina and they win that first game in Carolina 2-1. So Leafs fans probably feeling pretty good that they're going to go to a final, but Carolina had other plans. They win at home in overtime 2-1. They then win in Toronto in overtime 2-1. Uh, they win 3-0 in Toronto. Toronto stays alive in the series with a 1-0 victory in Carolina, but then Carolina wins 2-1 in overtime to win the series in 6. So tight checking, low scoring series, which is very indicative of this whole era. And uh, Carolina emerges as the winner and goes to the Stanley Cup final and plays against Detroit, which is a bit of a matchup mismatch. Uh, Detroit loses the first game at home in overtime 3-2. to two, So a little bit of daylight there for Carolina. Detroit's not going to let that last. Uh, they win 3-1. to one, Then they go to Carolina and in triple overtime, they win 3-2. to two. Uh, they then win 3 nothing in Carolina before going home and wrapping up the series with a 3-1 to one win. They win the series four games to one, and they win another Stanley Cup. Uh, Jeff O'Neill had three goals and an assist for Carolina in that Stanley Cup final. Uh, Ron Francis, a goal and two assists. Rod Brindamore had one goal in that final. Uh, Urbe, 919 save percentage in the final, so he played well. Uh, Fedorov, a goal and four assists. Igor Larionov had a three goals and one assist. Iserman had four assists, and Dominic Hasek, 9.42 save percentage in that Stanley Cup final. So you take a Detroit team that was already one of the best teams ever, and you give them one of the best goaltenders ever. Makes them tough to beat. So there you go. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, as always. Again, I assure you, I feel all right today. I just sound not all right. But let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe in the event you haven't done so already. Thank you guys so much for all your support as always. I will talk to you again soon.